We have the uh, ceremonies of throwing out the first ball here today. It will be tossed out by Miss Helen Ford of Hattiesburg, Mississippi. 21-year-old beauty was the recent winner of the 8th Annual Miss Black America Contest. She is a senior at Jackson State University, where she is majoring in music. The A's have taken the field, clad in their gold jerseys today. White pants, Bando at third, Campanera at short, Garner at second, Rudy at first. The outfield left to right, Claudel Washington, Billy Norris, and Reggie Jackson. Behind the plate will be Gene Tennis, and on the mound, the veteran left-hander from St. Louis, Missouri, Kenneth Holtzman. So, the big blue chips are all right out there in the middle of the table, so start dealing, Ned Martin, start dealing. All right, Jim Woods, I'll call your hand. <laughs> the Red Sox appear to be uh, quiet but loose as they warmed up before the game this afternoon. They just went about their business. They cut up a little bit. Uh, Louis Piat, of course, cutting up with everybody, including members of the A's team, joking with them and tossing good-natured insults across and speaking Spanish and uh, having seemed to be having a good time. And Daryl Johnson did not say and has not made any indication of if the Red Sox lose tonight, whether he would come back with Louis Piat tomorrow or wait till Thursday. It would, it would seem here that he would go with him on Wednesday because Louis would have had his three-day rest anyway. He pitched on Saturday. He would have all of Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday and uh, a good part of tomorrow if that should be the case. But right now, Louis Piat does not want to pitch tomorrow. Means he would not have to if the Red Sox could win now. He'd be ready for Saturday and uh, either the Reds or the Pirates. The umpires are splitting now to their positions. Holtzman is ready. The shadow on the field, the grandstand shadow, has eclipsed the entire skin part of the infield and is now out creating an inverse semicircle in the uh, from the right field line all the way over to the left field fence midway there. So the only players who will be in sunlight right now will be the center fielder, Billy North, and right fielder Reggie Jackson, who is standing at the perimeter of the shadow out in right. Now North is getting some uh, sunglasses, which he would need in a tough sun right now. It's a tough time to play here. Although for the hitters, it's not as bad as if the sun were uh, in farther or up higher in the sky, which would create a shadow between home plate and the pitcher's mound. The only sunlight scattered around the mound is that which is filtering through the opening of the second row of grandstands. Juan Benicus, who's had a good series so far, is up. Designated hitter, three for eight in the series. Here's the first pitch. It's way outside, ball one, and we're underway in game three. Benicus, three for eight. Got a hit off Holtzman in the opener. Ken throws again, and strike one is gone. One ball, one strike. Holtzman, a tough competitor, said, well, I'll see how it goes. He was told he was going to start, and he said, all right. Not used to pitching with two days rest off, and there's another call strike, and Benitez is quickly down on the count, one and two. One ball, two strikes to Juan Benitez, with Denny Doyle up next, and then Talia Simpson. The windup and the pitch, swinging, strike three on a curveball, and Benitez is out of there. One away. Holtzman starts quickly. The batter is Denny Doyle. Doyle is one for six in the playoff. Left-handed hitter. Darrell Johnson going right down the line with him. at second base. Line drive, base hit, right center. Jackson goes over to cut it off barehanded. Fires in toward the second base area, and it's a single for Denny Doyle. Jackson went over there. The ball took a funny hop, and he had to barehand it on a couple of bounces. So there's the first hit of the game, a solid single to right center by Doyle. Carl Yusefsky up. So it's been a dominating force in the first two Red Sox wins. Three for seven, including a home run the other day on Sunday. Yes, one for four in the regular season against Holton. There's a ground ball and a base hit into right field. Doyle turns second, heads for third. He'll get there easily. The throw comes across, has two cutoff men. Doyle holds as Bando throws to second base. They got the first two going in. Yes, tried to take two. And the second baseman, Phil Garner, covered. As Reggie Jackson still got by everybody, and Bando finally backed it up. 
Yes, tried to get the second base was thrown out. Doyle held at third. There are two outs now, though, and a run is cut down at second. The play going from Bando to Garner. So it's a single for Yosemite, his fourth series hit, and then, uh, as he is wont to do sometimes, tries to get a bit aggressive and take that extra base, which would put runners in scoring position at second and third. But Bando alertly backed up the infield as Reggie throw got by uh, Garner and then got by Campanera. The only assist goes to Bando since the throw to Jackson was just to throw into the infield, really. They kind of messed it up, but it turned out well for them. There are two outs now, and Carlton Fisk is up. Fudge three for eight on the series. Holtzman throws. Height side, ball one. So the Red Sox run into an out on the bases. The pitch to Fisk. It's a little bit low. Two and nothing to Carlton. The wind up by Holtzman. The pitch is inside ball three. Three and nothing to Fisk. Holtzman winds and throws. Fly ball, right field, fairly deep. Jackson coasting back. This judges the ball for a minute, but has it at the wall for out number three. That ball kept riding out there, and Jackson made a going-away catch. No run. Two hits and one left. And that out by Yosemite at second looks big. Going to the bottom of the first inning, the Red Sox nothing, and Oakland coming up. Rick Wise taking his warm-up and ready to face the Oakland A's. Wise has had plenty of rest. It's something that he has uh, looked forward to. He knew he was going to start this game, so he had been able to mentally prepare for it. He had a 19-12 and 12 record and a 3.95 earned run average on the year. His last start was against Cleveland on the 27th, the next to the last day of the season at Fenway. And he was beaten in that one, 5-2. to two, Gave up nine hits and four runs in a seven-plus inning. But if uh, he's ready for any one game, he is certainly ready mentally, certainly for this one. Right-hander has a chance to nail it down for the Red Sox and send them back as American League champions if he can win tonight. First man to face him will be Burt Campanera, who has been elevated to the leadoff spot, which he for so many years occupied with his ball club. They'd had North leading off and Campy batting down in the order, seven or eight. Now they've shifted them around. Captain Harris is hitless in the series. He's had one walk. Cecil Cooper at first base, Jenny Doyle at second, Rick Burleson at short, and Rico Petroselli at third. Charlie Asunsky in left. Fred Lynn in center, Dwight Evans in right, the catcher Carlton Fitz, the pitcher Rick Wise. Campy, right-handed batter, stands in. Here's the pitch to him, takes a strike on the outside corner. Wise is primarily a fastball pitcher, likes to use the fastball to spot. Regards it as his main pitch, his out pitch. Throws and it hits high and foul and out of play. Back to the right. Quickly, two strikes on Campanera. Cornell Washington and Sal Bando to follow. Bobby Winkles coaching third for the Athletics and Bobby Hoffman coaching first. Wise peers in and gets the sign. Looks straight over that glove. Comes in with his pitch. And strike three is called. Slider on the outside corner. And Campanaris called out on strike. Three pitches is what it took to do it. So each pitcher has fanned the first man. Cornell Washington, left fielder. Washington uh, played uh, as a designated hitter. Sunday in Fenway, he played left field in the opener. Had some troubles with the wall out there. But he's back in left now. This team is here at home. 
left-handed batter. He is actually more at home in center field. Here's the pitch by Wise, and it's high to Claudel. Ball one. Washington has gone two for eight in the series. On the year, hits 308. Fine young hitter. Came up here from double A to stay. The pitch. Strike called, fastball, shoulder high, and the count is one and one. Good crowd here. It's not capacity by any means, but it's a good crowd. The pitch to Washington bends away from a fastball inside. The count is two balls, one strike. No score. Bottom of the first inning. The Red Sox ran into an out on at, in the top of the first, the second, which cost them a run because uh, had not Yusemski been thrown out there, this would have scored easily, or uh, rather they would have scored easily on a first fly ball. A bouncer to Wise, one hop, throws the first, two down. Washington bounces out to Rick Wise. And here is Sal Bando, who's had two curious games completely opposite at the plate. He went hitless in the first game, over four, as Louis Piant struck him out three times. And in a Sunday game, he went four for four, hitting the wall four times, two singles and two doubles. Four for eight on the series. Right-handed batter, end of the season, hitting very hot in September. The pitch is high and away to him, ball one. Right throw on a course here, although the sun is still out brightly. Swinging strike. One ball, one strike. The sun now has uh, the patch of sun that we talked about in the outfield is now approaching the fence. And Lynn and Evans are now in shadow. The pitch. Foul ball, first base side, chased by Cooper and Fisk, and nobody will get it. Just in back of the Red Sox dugout as both Fisk and Coop went down into the dugout and disappeared. Red Sox wife almost got it. <laughs> That's right. One ball, two strikes. Bando the batter with two outs, nobody on, and a scoreless ball game in the first inning. Wise looks around at his outfield, which is peeled around toward left on Bando, playing him to pull. The one-two pitch. Ground ball toward the middle, in the center field, base hit. Picked up by Lynn, and Bando's on with his fifth hit of the series. And his fifth straight. Ground ball at the... Went off the to his left. He had no chance at it, really. Left center field. Reggie Jackson. Jackson, three for eight on the series, including a home run on Sunday at Fenway. Jackson, along with George Scott of the Brewers, led the American League in home runs this year, 36. Infield over shifted towards first, and the outfield around to right on Reginald, a left-handed batter with great power. The pitch is outside to him, ball one. Wise, it must be remembered, had trouble with a home run ball this year. Gave up over 30 of them. And a lot of times it really hurt him when people on. Lost a no-hitter to a home run, George Scott. Big right-hander comes in, and it's a little bit low. Ball two. Two and nothing to Jackson. Joe Rudy on deck. Wise ties a shoe. Two lays out of the round. Two and nothing to Jackson, as Reggie has the edge here. With Wise having come in with something, with something on it definitely, but around the strike zone. Wise gets set. He throws. Fly ball in the shallow left. Dostemski digging hard. Back goes Burleson. Foul ground. Burleson has it in foul territory right in front of Petrocelli. Jackson fouls out to end the inning. Burleson making the put out. No runs, one hit, one left. 
After one inning, no score. Well, I've just been announcing at great length here how Charles Finley is not here today because of pressing business in New York. Yesterday, when he left the ball club on Sunday night, went down to New York and didn't fly back with him. And uh, he also had the business in there today, but he is set up a hookup in the offices there, and he is watching the game in New York. And I believe uh, New York is carrying, much to the dismay of American League officials, the National League game between the Pirates and the Reds. Sunday and today. So they're not carrying the Red Sox and the Oakland A's, but on a special hookup, Finley is watching back in New York. He said he'll be here plenty of time tomorrow to watch the A's win game number four, assuming that they're going to win game number three. All right, here we go. Freddie Lynn drives to bust the first pitch and fouls it off strike one. Lynn batting against Holtzman tried to dump a bunt up the right side to drag it, really. But the pitch was a tough one to bunt. It was up high. And Freddie fouled it up the first base line. Lynn is three for eight in the series. The pitch by Holtzman, a curveball, whacked into left field, base hit. Lynn is going to the opposite field in these playoffs. He's got a single there, takes the turn, the ball gets by Campaneris, but he stays at first base. Lynn's infield having trouble holding on to the outfield relays so far. So Freddie Lynn is now 4-9. Four, four and on every hit that he's gotten, I believe, in this series, he's gone to left field. Just reached out and went with a pitch. Runner at first, Petroselli up, takes the strike. Rico is 1-8 for eight in the series, but it was a home run on Sunday. He went out for... Uh, there's a foul back that over three against Holtzman last Saturday. The count on Rico now is 0-2. And Four hits for Lynn, three singles and a double, and all to left field. Holtzman to Petroselli. It's off speed outside a ball. Then send that ball over. So it is one and two to Rico. Lynn has knocked in three runs in this playoff. Pitch to Petroselli, swings and misses, strike three. He was jammed by a slider from Holtzman, and he looked bad swinging at that one. So Rico is out. There's one away, Lynn holding it first, and Dwight Evans up. Evans is one for seven. In the two games, he had a double to left field in the game on Saturday. That was off Holtzman. Here is the set and the pitch. Foul ball out of play. Nothing in one. Twice this year, Holtzman has gone with two days rest. He got no decision in either one. One was a loss and one was a win for his ball club, but he did it a couple of times. He's not used to it, however. He would have liked another day. Ken looks over to first base. Throws over there. Lynn ducks back. Joe Rudy holding the bag against Lynn. Bill Garner is the second baseman. Campy at short. And Bando at third. Ken is the catcher. Holtzman on the mound. Fly ball, deep right field, not deep enough though. North comes over, ball holds up, and Billy North, the center fielder, has it for about number two. Looks as though it would go farther than it really did. So there's two down. Bring to the plate, Cecil Cooper. Cooper's hitting 500 in the two games. Three for six. He had uh, a double off Vida Blue and a double off Jim Todd at Fenway on Sunday. And Cooper had a single against Holtzman on Saturday. Nothing, nothing. Second inning. Lynn at first. Two out. Pitch to Coop. There goes Lynn. Fly ball. Left center field. Hit pretty well. North under it, though. Back in left center. He's got it. And the side is retired. No run. One hit. One left. After an inning and a half, no score. I want to remind you, the Red Sox announced that uh, 
standing room and whatever bleacher seats that are still available for the World Series will go on sale at the Red Sox ticket office on Jersey Street Thursday at 9 a.m. Whatever bleacher seats that are left and available and standing room seats for the series will go on sale at the Red Sox ticket office on Jersey Street Thursday at 9 o'clock in the morning. Joe Rudy, first baseman, still hurting with a bad thumb, but still very necessary in the athletic scheme of things. Rudy is three for eight on the series. Right-handed batter. Rudy had two doubles in Sunday's game. One against Reggie Cleveland, one against Roger Moret. And he had a single off the glove of Louis Tiant in the opener. The pitch to him. Fly ball, deep left center field, way back. But Krzyzewski is there, pops the glove, he's got it for the out. Ball hung up in uh, the breeze, which is kind of indistinguishable as to where it's blowing. It has drafts around his coliseum. Kind of a cross left to right wind, but that ball was hit well, but held up. Rudy is out flying to Yastrzemski, and here's Billy Williams, the designated hitter. Did not play in on Sunday's game, and he went 0 for 4 on Saturday. Left-handed hitter, over from the Cubs. Singing his remaining swan song years in baseball in the other league, in the American League. Takes the pitch outside, a ball. Red Sox nothing, and the A's nothing. Second inning. Wise throws. Strike called. One ball, one strike. Rick looks in and gets the sign. Here comes. Outside, a ball. Two and one. Tennis on deck. The right arm around and the pitch to the plate. Hit on the ground, pass wise, taken by Doyle. Going to his right, he throws in time to get Billy Williams. About a step in time to Cooper. And there are two gone. Doyle over to Coop. Gene Tennis, 0 for 7 in the series. 0 for 4 on Sunday and... Walked once, his only time on base. That was against Louis Tiant in the ninth inning on Saturday. 0 for 3 there. Nothing, nothing, ball game, second inning. Wise reads the sign from fifth. And here's the pitch. Ground ball sharply hits the short. One hopper to Burleson. Fires over to Cooper, and it's a 1 2 3 inning for Wise. Nothing across, and after two innings, no score. <laughs> While Ken Holtzman takes his warm up before the third inning, we'll pause for station identification. This is the American League Championship Series. And this is the sound of sports for Southern New England, where you'll follow baseball's World Series. Listen here on Radio 1080, WTIC in Hartford, Connecticut. Going now to the top of the third inning. A scoreless ball game and a tight ball game, one that uh, you expect to be scoreless or very close at this time and probably all the way through, although you never know. There's explosive elements on each of these ball clubs that could possibly just uh, start tearing away at things. Meanwhile, you look down and you think about number 34 and the A's bullpen, Raleigh Fingers, who worked a tough five innings on Sunday. But who could come back and will, if necessary. Nick Drago, so far, has been the better, has uh, shown the better of the two, and has been the difference in the bullpen. Here is Rick Ferlton leading off. He sends a fly ball to Jackson in right. Reggie under it in one little patch of sunlight. He's got it for the out. Carlson is now two for six on the playoff series. 
Hit on the first pitch. Fly ball to right. Juan Vadik is up. He struck out in the first. Red Sox picked up a pair of hits in the first inning, but at the attempt, he singled Doyle to third, and the throw got by a few people. Yes, tried to take second and was thrown out. The pitch to Juan is up high. Ball one. Vadikas went two for seven against Holston on the year. Ground foul. He is crowded by a breaking pitch. Turned on it and fouled it off. One ball, one strike to Benicus. Got a double off Doyle on Saturday. Or off uh, Colson, rather. A line drive double off Jackson's glove. Chops another foul back. And the count now is one ball, two strikes. There's a sign out there in right field. I can hardly believe that I'm looking at it. It says, Susan, will you please marry me? Love, Spike. I know, I saw that before the game. It was out there. A guy's proposing on national television, I guess. The pitch to Benicus. Hit on the ground to third. Taken by Bando near the bag. Fires across in time. Benicus is out. There are two away. Well, lots of luck, Spike. Denny Doyle singled to right center in the first. Got as far as third base on the Yosemite single. Two out as Holtzman looks sharp. Left-hander works. Curve ball hit on the ground to the right side. Taken by Rudy at first. Steps on the bag. An easy rocking chair. One, two, three inning for Kenny Holtzman. Each pitcher throwing well. Nothing across. And after two and one half innings, no score. Route 9A, Saybrook Road in Adam. And the South Windsor Equipment Company, 89 Sullivan Avenue in South Windsor, Connecticut. No score. There are three hits for the Red Sox and one for the A's. The nearest uh, two score was Denny Doyle, who got to third base, and if not the out hadn't been made, could have walked home on the ensuing fly ball by fifth. But it was not to happen. Wise taking his warm up with fifth. As Jim told you, if the Red Sox should win this one, they hop on a plane tonight, fly overnight, and be back in Boston tomorrow morning. For the chance of a day at rest, and then a light workout probably, getting ready for the World Series. If they lose, well, we're back here again tomorrow night with suitcases packed again. <laughs> That's just like being in a Pullman. Here is Billy North, the center fielder, 0 for 7 on the series, a switcher batting left against Y. Dropped down to the number 8 position by manager Alvin Dart. Y throws. Knocked him down with a fastball, ball one. North just falls down and does a back somersault. <laughs> Loses the helmet. One ball, no strike. Petricelli is a step or two in on the grass at third, respecting North's speed. And the infield shortens up a little bit, too, as they would on Campanaris, as they would on Claudel Washington. There's a fastball thrown outside, ball one, ball two. Two and nothing. Wise throws. Strike call, picks up the outside corner. Two and one. 330 feet down each line here, 375 to the alleys and 400 to center field. The pitch is high and tight for ball three. In the second inning at Pittsburgh, the Cincinnati Reds have jumped off to a 1-0 lead over the Pirates. 1-0 Cincinnati in the second. Game three, the Reds are two games up on Pittsburgh. 3-1 pitch, North taking a strike. Three and two. Here's a 3-2 three, uh, three, pitch, lifted toward right field, back for it goes Evans, has room, and has the ball, and what remaining little patches of sunlight are extant on the field. One out. Still Garner, the second baseman, moves in. Garner is 0 for 4, 
in the playoffs. He went 0 for 2 against Piat and 0 for 2 against Reggie Cleveland. Then there were pinch hitters and other people playing in play. Garner, a right-handed batter. Oakland nothing, the Red Sox nothing, bottom of the third. Pitch. Garner takes the fastball up high, ball one. Rick Wise spins and throws. Strike call, sniffing the outside corner. One ball, one strike. Rico Petroselli even with a bag at third on Garner. Fly ball, left field. Yastrzemski moving back. Back pedaling under it. And he's got this one. Two out. Top of the order, Bert Campanaris moving in. He took a third strike in the first inning. Plate umpire is Bill Kunkel. Ron Luciano at first. Jim Evans at second. And Hank Morganweck at third. Don Denkinger down the left field line. And Lou DeMuro in right field. Ground ball to shortstop. Two hops to Burleson. Over to first. In time. Another one, two, three inning for Wise. He's retired the last seven men to face him. At the end of three, Oakland nothing, Red Sox nothing. What's best for your car and for you? Three inning totals from the Coliseum in Oakland. The Red Sox, no runs, three hits, no errors. And the Oakland A's, no runs, one hit, and no errors. As Ken Holtzman and Rick Wise have been classic so far and have pitched a fine, strong baseball. There really hasn't been much of a flurry of anything except for that two-hit flurry by the Red Sox in the first inning when they ran into an out at second. Sunlight right now is over the bleachers. is past the bleachers. Now everything's in shadow. There's just little sun on a bank of uh, grass and ground cover, which uh, extends from the top of the bleachers up to the walk where you see people walking around past the fence. All set to go as Carl Yastrzemski leads off in the third, and to tell you about it, Jim Wood. Thank you very much, Ned. Carl singled softly into right field and then got overly ambitious and was cut down, as Ned described, trying to get the second of the messed up. So, coming into the infield. A soft curve by Holtzman knocks uh, Yastrzemski out of the battery box. One ball, no strike. Carl's dad here today, flying in to take in this game and are the series, hoping it'll just be the one game. And the pitch, swing on a miss for a strike, one and one the count. Enthusiastic crowd, they're roaring on every pitch here today, every out recorded by the A's, every strike recorded by the left-hander, Ken Holtzman. Outfield, a little bit around toward right, Camp and Harris overshifted toward second. Holtzman brings in the pitch, in and over, strike two. One and two the count. And Holtzman doesn't look like he's pitching with two days rest. He and Wise going at it head and head. And we're quickly in the fourth inning in scoreless. The one-two pitch to Yastrzemski. Reach four and foul back. One and two to count. Bill Kunkel, former pitcher himself, Brian the plate calling balls and strikes today. John Zimmer coaching third. Chesky over his first. Long stare this time by Holtzman. He usually works quickly. Works to Yastrzemski. Another foul ball off to the right of the plate. One ball, two strikes. California band is about as far away from the field of play as they can get. Way out in the right field corner in the fourth or fifth deck. However you look at it here. Again, the one-two pitch. Soft tap. Pass Holtzman. Charged by Garner, so got him. Garner had to charge all the way into the grass, and he got the Krepsky by a step. One man out. So Holtzman has come on to retire six in a row. Charles and Fisk, the batter now, hit the long fly ball that Jackson almost let escape him in the first inning. So 
Fudge will try again, and Billy North moves well over into left center field on him. Fields in fine shape here. Fastball tails away outside from Olsen. One ball, no strike. Famous Mule, he loves the grass here. Breaking ball into the dirt. Knocked down by Tennis. Two balls, no strike. Both Wise and Holtzman have had perfect control so far. Oh, a lot of banners around here. This looks like Shade Stadium. 2 nothing pitch. Ball three is outside. It's the same way he worked fifth the first time. He went 3-0 and with him. One out, nobody on. Holtzman... Tugs up the peak of his green and gold cap. Looked like he was ready to fling it and then backed off again. Here's the 3-0 pitch to fifth. A shot down to Campanaris. He's up. He's on the first in time. So fifth got a green light on the 3-0 and and hit a routine driver to Campanaris and there's two men out. And the batter will be Fred Lynn. Line to base hit to left his first time up. And then stayed right there as the next three men went out easily. Base hits and runs hard to come by. Three hits for Boston, one for Oakland so far. Bando comes in a full stop on the grass, but Rudy is deep at first, and there's a drive down into the right field corner and foul. Looked good off the bat, but kept breaking over and finally landed about a foot, foot and a half foul down into the right field corner. So Lynn went right after him on the first delivery. No balls and a strike. The Oakland Alameda Coliseum. Bando has come on to exchange a few words with Holtzman now. The A's are down, but they're not out. You listen to them around the batting cage before the game. They to be their usual selves. Foul back out of play. Nothing to do, and the Red Sox in their quiet, unassuming manner showed all the confidence in the world, too. Two quick strikes on Fred Lynn with two outs and nobody on. No score, fourth inning. Holtzman into the windup and works to Lynn down low, one and two. Neither bullpen is even moves. They're all bundled up in the bullpen. Wind is quite a chill factor. There's a line drive to left. Washington comes on. He's got it. And drops the ball. And Lynn digs on into second base. He's safe. It's an error on Claudel Washington all the way. Came on and nonchalantly grabbed the line drive and then it fell away and he was very slow recovering it. And Lynn had even almost stopped. With the big turn around first and then came on and got in safely just ahead of the throw. A two-base error by Claudel Washington, who is having a rough series in the field, to say the least. Here's Petroselli, struck out his first time up. So a two-out threat here for the Boston Red Sox. Brings it into the right hand hitter and a drive to right field. Base hit. Here comes Lynn around third. Jackson falls down. Red Sox lead 1 0. Rico Petroselli picking on the first pitch. Lines a hard base hit to right. Jackson came on in a hurry to take a shot at Lynn at the plate. And all of a sudden, down he went right on the feet of his pants. And there was no throw made. And the Red Sox lead 1 0. An RBI for Rico Petroselli. And another in run, of course. Here's Dewey Evans, slide to center his first time up. Four hits now for Boston in the air by Claudel Washington. Proved costly for Holtzman. They did not play well behind him in the first game of the series, as you'll recall. He's outside, one ball, no strike. And Holtzman must say, why me? And he'll be the first to tell you he's not had the best of defense behind him in a lot of his games this year. Evans swings and misses for a strike. One and one the got. Action of the bullpen. Jim Todd comes up now and starts to warm up for the A's. Oh. 
One ball, one strike. Petroselli, short lead, Rudy holding there. Down a little bit low, and Holtzman took a stare at Kunkel, but not much of a one. Two balls and a strike. Cooper on deck. Another brief lead by Petroselli. Another big swing and a miss on an off-speed pitch, and he had Dewey looking bad on that swing. Two balls, two strikes. Holtzman has fanned two. Hasn't walked anybody. Two men out. A run is home. He works way inside, and a full count now exists on Evans. Three and two. And for what advantage it gives you, Petroselli will be running. Could be a big advantage if Evans can find a gap on the 3-2 pitch, which is now on its way. Shot down to Rudy. Fair ball right at the back. The advantage there was Rudy holding the runner. Well, first ball might have been over the bag and down the line. Evans is out. Rudy unassisted. One run. One hit. One error, one left. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Boston leads one nothing. <laughs> Avoid the lines. You can, you know, if you plan ahead and become a Red Sox season ticket holder. You can be sure that the Red Sox will make it all the way again next year. So be there at Fenway Park for all the exciting action. There are six basic plans to choose from. One designed to meet your needs. So plan ahead by calling the Red Sox ticket office at 267-8661 or right to Red Sox tickets for Jersey Street Boston 02215 Avoid the line Be a Red Sox season ticket holder We go now to the bottom half of the fourth inning and the guy that made the big error that allowed the lead run to score Cardell Washington will lead it off Cardell bounced off the wise his first time up A few boos, but for the most part, the fans give uh, Cardell a little burst of applause as he stands in. Lynn is playing him a little off toward left center. Petroselli in at third. Cooper up a couple of steps at first. And Wise goes to work on Cardell. A swing and a foul. Third base side and out of play for a strike. Nothing in one. The A's with their backs to the wall. And Pittsburgh the same way. And trailing right now for the same margin that the A's are. One to nothing. In their home ballpark. Three rivers. No balls, one strike. Pitch is in too tight to the left-hand batter. One and one to count. Sun is practically all out of the Coliseum now, but... All back up into the beautiful Oakland Hills. Ground ball, right side. Cooper goes over, can't get it. Wise comes to cover. They got him. Good play. Cooper went very wide, and he didn't come close to coming up with that one, but Doyle, so to speak, had it all the way, and Wise got there. A full step ahead of Washington. The play is 4-1. to one. Kyle Bando, who's been the A's hottest hitter. In the playoffs, he's had five straight hits, singles, for the only base blow off Wise in the first inning. The only base blow in the ball game off Wise. Sal Vendo from Danville, California now, takes outside for a ball, one and all the count. Jackson on deck. One to nothing, Boston, last half of the fourth inning. Ground ball to short. Burleson goes over. He's up and on to Cooper. Two out. Rick Wise is now retired. One, four, seven, nine in a row. And here's Reggie. Fouled out to Burleson deep down the third base side. His first time up. Wise has been a far better pitcher than related on the road than he has at Fenway. Gave up so many of his home runs at Fenway Park. 
That's the Sully right up the grass at third. Pitch to Jackson is just outside for a ball. One and all the count. Bobby Winkles coaching at third, and the other Bobby, Hoffman by name, is down at first. Two outs, nobody on. One nothing, last half of the fourth inning. Wise brings it in, and Jackson lines in the left field. Safe miss. The jump, he goes over, back has it. Jackson's going to go for two. Here's the throw coming on. He is out. Coops again, went over, backhanded the ball, and fired a perfect strike to Denny Doyle to cut down Reggie Jackson. Gives Jackson a base hit, and the out is 7-4. to four. No runs, one hit, no errors, and nobody left. At the end of four, Boston leads Oakland one to nothing. Four runners, 
Strucken to the Red Sox with one away and Juan Benitez who struck out and grounded a third, the batter. Tennis out to the mound to talk to his battery mate and jackets are being peeled off down in the A's bullpen and again it's Jim Todd. Big number 22 to warm up. Runners second and one man out. One to nothing. Boston leading in the fifth. And trying to wrap it all up here and get home to Boston come morning. Holtzman works and Benitez takes high off the peak of the cap for a ball. One and all the count. Outfield practically straight away for Benitez. Who did pretty well against this club this year. Although he's 0-2 in this game. Works and he tried to go to right field and flopped the foul back into the second deck. One ball, one strike. Dark has practically said that if the A's win today, he'll come right back with Vida Blue tomorrow. But they're a long ways from winning yet. Way outside, and tennis just did stab it. Two balls and a strike. Two and one with one out, and the doubling Burleson is second. Rick has a short lead out there. Garner bluffs over. Holtzman looks back, doesn't throw, wiggles his head back and forth, delivers low into the dirt, ball three. Three and one the count now on Juan Benica. And Denny Doyle on deck. Don Zimmer out of the coach's box by a couple of steps and yelling instructions out toward Burleson. Here's the delivery, and Benica takes strike two. Breaking ball right at the letter. Oh, full count on Juan Benicus. Three balls and two strikes. A stare by Holtzman. Calm and cool. And the payoff pitch. A drive out towards center field. North and Jackson converging, and it is Billy North for the catch. And Burleson will hold and will pause for station identification. This is the American League Championship Network. The sound of sports for Southern New England is where you follow baseball's World Series. Listen right here on Radio 1080. This is WTIC in Hartford, Connecticut. Holtzman way over in foul territory to back up any throw Jackson might have made had Burleson been coming, but he didn't. Paul Lindblad has now joined Todd in the bullpen as Wes Stock comes to the mound, calls tennis out there, and the pitching coach of the A's Having a bit of a chat with Holtzman, who has pitched well as he did in the first game of the championship playoffs, only kind of undone by his teammates' errors. One thing he doesn't do uh, is get himself in trouble with walks, Jim. He's very, he only walked one in that first game and didn't hurt him, and he's the kind of pitcher that's around the plate. You've got to fight him, and, and of course he hasn't had any help much behind him, but he's, uh, he's as good as they've shown. He certainly is. Here's Doyle, singled his first time up, grounded to Rudy, unassisted his last time up. And he takes a sinking pitch low for a ball. One and all the count. Red Sox trying to strike again with Burleson at second and two men out. They lead one to nothing. Holtzman works. There's a shot in the right field. It's going to fall in for a base hit. Here's Burleson around third. He'll score and Boston leads two nothing. Denny Doyle has done it again. Six hits now off Holtzman. Doyle just reached out for the outside pitch and pulled it toward the line. Jackson had to come away for it, and he had absolutely no play on Burleson at all at the plate. So the Red Sox build up the lead to two to nothing, and Carl Yastrzemski stands in. Has singled and grounded out to Garner. Denny Doyle, a key figure ever since he was acquired from the Angels and an important figure in this playoff. There's a shot in the right field. That's a base hit. Here is the runner going to third. Jackson throw is coming on, and he's in there. So Yostrzemski now is two for three. And that was a line drive shot that got out to Reggie Jackson in a hurry. And quickly, there's seven hits now off Ken Holtzman, who is now showing the effects of coming back with two days rest. Alvin Dark is coming to the mound 
then that will be all for Kenneth Holtzman. His stock has already been out there once. So Kenneth and Dark and Holtzman and Bando have all gathered at the mound, and the call goes out to the bullpen for Jim Todd. And while he walks in, we'll remind you that you're listening to a break of the action here, and we'll be back in a moment. This is Coach Don Shuler. Hello, I'm Roger Miller for Gabriel Red Rider Shock Absorbers. If your car is a couple of years old or more, you could be overdue for new shocks. And there's no better time to get them than right now during our Red Rider Roundup. Buy three Red Rider Shocks and we'll give you the fourth one free. Save 25%. <laughs> That's my kind of deal. Red Riders are heavy-duty shocks with 40% more capacity to help firm up worn suspensions and deliver a smooth ride. Join the roundup where you see me on the Gabriel by three get the fourth one free sign. Offer good at participating dealers in the U.S. only. It's October 31st, Gabriel Red Riders. For Gabriel shocks and all your automotive needs, see New England Speed, 116 Brighton Avenue, Alston, and pick apart 56 Bridge Street, Salem, and 220 Boston Turnpike, Shrewsbury. for Ken Holtzman who gave it his best shot with two days rest. He goes four and two-thirds inning. Two runs, seven hits, of which five were delivered by left-hand batters. Struck out three, walked nobody, and Jim Todd is on. This is Todd's third appearance in his many games in this playoff series. In the opener, he did not uh, pitch an inning, any part of an inning. As he gave up one hit to the only batter he faced, who was Juan Benicus. And that drove in a run, but he was not charged with it. He was finally charged with a run there. And on Sunday, he worked one inning plus in relief, giving up one hit and no runs. The hit was a double to Cecil Cooper. On the season, Todd was uh, quite a pitcher for the A's after they got him from the Chicago Cubs and really shored up their bullpen in long and short relief and gave them the right-hander they needed to go along with the fingers. Todd... Uh, Throws the single ball, keeps it low, and right now Paul Lindblad is at work still in the bullpen for the Oakland A's. All right, runners on, first and third. Yes, at first, Denny Doyle over at third. Here's the pitch to Fisk, and a little looping drive on out into center field, and gets called in for a base hit. A run scores. Yastrzemski goes to third. Boston leads 3-0. Fisk dumps a little Texas leaguer just out of the reach of Bert Campanaris. And the little Red Sox contingent is going wild down there, waving their banners. Red Sox lead 3 nothing. And again, runners on at first and third. And they're going to take Todd out right now and bring in the left-hander, Paul Lindblad, to pitch to Fred Lynn. So Todd, as he did the other day, pitches to only one batter and gave up a base hit. The other day it was Benicus, who hit him and drove in a run. So he's around for just the one hitter, gives up the base hit. And Lindblad being brought on now to face Fred Lynn. And this is Lindblad's second appearance in the playoff series. He faced uh, the Red Sox on the opening day on Saturday and pitched one-third of an inning. Gave up two hits and was charged with two runs. He gave up doubles to Evans and Burleson, or rather to uh, a single to Fisk and a double to Lynn. And Lynn's double drove in two. And eventually he was charged with two runs. So he is getting a shot as Alvin Dark is trotting out the bullpen again. We've seen them all. Sonny Siebert is warming up down there. He hasn't pitched yet, but not many people that haven't pitched on this uh, Oakland ball club is that Dark has seen them all come and go. The Red Sox in this inning have punched out four hits, led on by a double by Burleson with one out, and then with two gone, consecutive singles by Doyle, Yastrzemski, and Fitz. And five of those seven hits off left-hander Ken Olsen were by left-handed hitters. Two by Yastrzemski, two by Lynn, or uh, two by Doyle, rather, and one by Lynn. So uh, the left-handed jinx really didn't seem to bother them today. And it's a 3-0 lead, and they look big right now. 
Bud Lund in the regular season faced Lundblad six times, got three hits off of him. And Lund so far today has singled and lived on the big error by uh, Claudel Washington and scored the first run of the ball game. The Reds continue to lead Pittsburgh one to nothing in the bottom of the fifth inning. The one run came on a home run by Dave Concepcion, the Reds shortstop. Well, the Pirates have just done nothing in the way of hitting in their playoff series. Here's Lynn up with Yaz at third. Fifth gone at first. Two men out. And Boston leading 3-0. Top half of the fifth inning. Here's the delivery. It's a bit wide. And the A's were looking for something there. And they didn't get it. Fitz wasn't going anyplace. Looks like almost a pitch out by Lynn Blatt. Outfield is straight away for the left-hand hitting Lynn. Who's in a big spot up there right now. Lynn Brad works in a hard swing and a foul ball in and out of the glove of tennis. One ball, one strike. Sonny Siebert taking up the burden now, and he's losing. So it looks like Dark's got to throw the book today. Because to use an old cliche for the A's, there is no tomorrow. One ball, one strike. This goes, a swing and a miss. The throw is on down to second base. Face there, and you simply held up. And an argument ensues. Campanaris in an argument with second base umpire Jim Evans and Alvin Garth running out there. Dennis set the ball down, and Campanaris took the throw up in front of the bag. But claims he got around in time to tag Fitz. But Evans did not see it that way, and Jastrzemski did not come. So the Red Sox have runners on at second and third now, but Lynn is down in the count, one ball, two strikes. Alvin and Evans, chin to chin and jaw to jaw. you recall that it was Alvin Dark at Fenway Park who picked up third base and threw it into the stands when he disagreed very violently with an umpire's call. He shakes his finger in Evans' face. far up in front of the bag to uh, get him. All right. He has the runner at third, Fisk on at second. Ooh, and a base hit here could break it open. One ball, two strikes on Fred Lynn. Here's the pitch into the dirt. Gets away. Here comes Jastrzemski down. He scores as the ball gets away. And Bando comes on to recover and it's 4 nothing Boston. Wild pitch charged to Lindblad. And Yaz alertly came tearing in, and the throw by Tennis hit him, danced away, and just took a big turn at first. And Boston leads four to nothing on the wild pitch. Fifth moving over to third, and the count on Lynn. Two balls, two strikes. A big three-run inning for the Red Sox. Long stare in by Lindblad. He works down to Lynn. High pop-up, foul territory. Rudy's got a lot of room. Garner coming too, and it is Joe Rudy for a foul ball catch to retire the side. But the Red Sox come up with three runs on four hits. No errors in the inning and one left. And we go to the bottom of the fifth. Boston four, Oakland nothing. Hi, I'm Larry Dupre of Larry's Auto Supply in South Windsor. And I'm Mark Okwasati of Mark's Used Auto Parts in East Granby. We've just installed a special phone line between our two businesses. Now the individual car owner can stop in at either location for fast, efficient service for almost any automotive need. At Mark's Used Auto Parts, we stock late model auto parts and sheet metal. It's quick, right over the counter, no digging around in the junkyard. At Larry's Auto Supply, we stock auto parts, tools, and accessories, one of the largest inventories in all of New England. Stop in at either Larry's Auto Supply or Mark's Used Auto Parts for your complete auto repair needs. And remember, we're tied together with a special phone line available seven days a week. For a complete new concept in auto parts, tools, and accessories, both new and used, it's Larry's Auto Supply in South Windsor and Mark's Used Auto Parts in East Granby. For speedy service, direct phone lines between both locations.
Well, Rick Wise has a big four to work with now, but he's got a ways to carry it against the proud champions of baseball, the Oakland A's, who may be in the final hour. Who knows? Quite a ways to go in this one yet. Rudy Williams and tennis to face Rick Wise here in the last half of any number five. Wise has surrendered only two hits. He has struck out one. He has not walked anybody. And darkness beginning to settle in a bit here on the West Coast. Rudy flied rather deep to Yastrzemski and left his first time up. Baseballs here tonight appear to be carrying much better in the right field than they do in the left. 3.30 down both lines here and 3.75 up the power alley. And the crowd is ranting and roaring now to get something started for the Oakland A's. Taking his time, massaging the baseball up there and waiting for Rudy to get set. Last half of the fifth, and here we go. Rick brings in the first pitch, flopped out and foul back. First base side out of play for a strike. 0 and 1 the count. Billy Williams will be next. Getting a little chillier as the hour goes later here. Coming up to a quarter to seven out here. And nobody going to bed back east. I'll bet on that. Long look in by Wise. No balls, one strike. Rick fires and a ground ball captured by Wise. Good play, flip the Cooper, one out. Rick had to lean off to his left, although I think the ball was going to be catchable by Doyle. Billy Williams up now, grounded to Doyle, his first time up. So the Red Sox are leading, and the Reds are leading. And if those two get together in a World Series, there'll be, a, you know what, the predominant color will be. A big swing and a miss by Williams for a strike. 0-1 oh, the count. One out, nobody on. Wise into the motion. Fires the fastball, it's low. One ball, one strike. Outfield practically straight away against Williams. Here's Rick, 1-1 one, one delivery. Strike two call. Ford right down the middle, and Williams, I think, wishes he had that one back. Count goes to one and two. The only man that Wise fan was the first guy up in the ballgame. Campanaris on a call third strike. One, two delivery. Middle number hit right back to Wise again. He's up and on to Cooper. Two out. So Rick Wise has had three fielding chances as a fifth and one for a put out. He's been busy. Tennis for about an hour. Grounded to Burleson his first time up. 4-0, Boston leading. We're in the last half of the fifth inning. Burleson crowded over a little toward third by a step. Closed up toward Petticelli, and Doyle overshifted to his right by a step or two. The tennis takes high for a ball. 1-0 the count. The Yorkie hosted a fine party here last night for members of the media, which everybody enjoyed. Breaking ball in and over for a strike, one and one. He was very quiet out here at the workout yesterday. He said, my players did the talking. I just came to watch. Strike two call, slider on the outside corner, one and two. The down in uh, the heart of Thomas A. Yorkie. You know how he wants this one. And then all the rest of it, if it is to be. Two outs, nobody on. One ball, two strikes. On Fury, Gene Tanaki. A ball outside, and Fisk and Wise thought they had it. Fisk kind of slightly turned around, says something to Kunkel. 2-2 Two -two on tennis. Good waiter, gets a lot of walks. 
wise into the motion. Here's the delivery. And a line drive foul down the left field side and out of play. Deep along the left field line. Wise goes back and up to his brow. He can't be preparing any tonight in a truly typical evening in the Bay Area. Although October and November out here are very pleasant months. Except the sign from Fisk. Here's the pitch to Tennant. Foul back and out of play. Still two balls, two strikes. A lot of controversy in the papers here about one of the clubs moving. And I've just seen with Bob Stevens, the veteran giant writer of the uh, San Francisco Chronicle, says definitely the Giants will be sold. But nobody knows who's going to buy them yet. And then they'll go from there. The 2 2 delivery. A ball up high, and again wise throws for the dugout, thinking he has the call third strike. I think Rick may feel in his own heart he's had tennis out of there a couple of times. But now he stands at a full count, three and two. Two outs and nobody on. Wise into the motion and the three-two pitch. Foul back and out of play. Tennis is hanging in there. Some people are actually out here in church plays. I've never seen an area like this in the two years I lived out here. I'd be freezing to death. They walk around with no coats on or anything else. They don't mind it. Wise walks in a little circle around the mound. Petrocelli, a deep third, about four feet off the line. Tennis waiting. Dot cocktail with the right ear. And again, the 3 2 pitch. Watch him. gives up his first base on ball. And the batter will be Billy North. Clyde to Evans his first time up. Just one out, had a brief word with Wise. The 3-2 pitch that time was nowhere near the plate. Well, Tennis spoiled the good one and gets his second walk of the playoff series. 4-0 Boston. Last of the fifth, and Wise trying to keep the score right at that. Cooper holds the bag slightly off of it against Tennant. Here's the pitch to North, fired in for a strike, going one. Outfield a little bit toward left. Lynn a couple of steps over toward left center against the switch hitter batting left. Time is called as North jumped out of the batter's box. to look into his dugout, see the tops of the coach's heads, the Alvin Dark, left Dark. Can't see into the Red Sox dugout at all from our vantage point. Here's the delivery. A high pop-up, foul territory, Petrocelli, looking for it, looking, looking, and he got it. Rico Petrocelli right at the railing. Looks like he lost the ball for a moment, and then came on to grab it at the last moment. Our friends, no runs, no hits, no errors. One left through five complete innings. The Red Sox four and the A's nothing. Hi, Joe Garagiola here. And you know, when it came to offering you those great money-saving rebates, Chrysler was first. And now, we're leading the way again with our nationwide sale. in and make your best year-end deal with your participating Chrysler Plymouth dealer on a new 75 Fury or full-size Chrysler. And on top of that, you're going to get $300 back. Just think, a great year-end deal plus $300 back. Of course, an offer this good has to be limited to you retail customers out there. So come on in, because when it comes to saving you money... They have just announced 
announce the paid attendance here for this first game in Oakland and Red Sox hoping it'll be the last. 49,358. 49,358. It's the second largest crowd in American League Championship playoff history. The only one bigger was for the fifth and final game, the Oakland A's against the Tigers in Detroit in 1972. So we head now into the sixth inning, and again, Ned Martin. All right, Jim, here's the Pepper You had a big hit in the fourth. He singled to right field to score Fred Lynn with the first run of the ball game. The Red Sox added three more in the fifth. They lead 4 nothing. Dan Bonson and Dick Bosman, two right-handers, warming up in the bullpen for the A's. Petroselli lines right to Bando at third. One out. Rico hit the ball hard, but right at Sal. One away on one pitch. All in blad on the mound for the A's. Came on, faced one batter, Freddie Lynn, and got him in the fifth. Dwight Evans up. Evans is slide to center and line to first. Lindad and no wind-up motion. There's a foul back. Strike one. Now the lights take over as the sun has gone down in Oakland. The arc lights on brilliantly. Against the twilight sky. The pitch is inside to Evans. One ball, one strike. The pressure very much on the athletics right now. They trail 4 nothing. Evans goes for a change-up curve and misses. One ball, two strikes. Cecil Cooper on deck. Lynn Blagg gets the sign from tennis. Left-hander comes in with his fastball and it's fouled back. Evans went two for three against Lindblad in the regular season. Ball kick, throws, curve, foul back. One and two to Evans. The big hitters tonight so far for Boston. Denny Doyle with two singles. Carl Yastrzemski, two singles. Fisk with an RBI. Petroselli with an RBI. Merlson has a double. That's the only extra base hit for the Red Sox. But they lead four nothing. Oh, yeah, there's been something. Boy, he's played it all the way to the hill again. Evans bangs a little ground ball to third. Bando scoops and throws in time. Two out. Still away, and Cooper coming in. Fly to center and struck out. His empty two for three tonight. He is now five for ten on the playoffs. And it just played the tar out of left field. Again tonight, they said, okay, maybe he can play the wall, but he can't bring it with him to Oakland. And Daryl Johnson said, wait till you see him out there. He can play left field still. And play it, he did. He cut down Reggie Jackson trying to stretch. Strike call to Cooper. Nothing in one to Cecil. Red Sox leading 4-0, top of the six. Lindblad fires, fastball fouled at the plate. And he's ahead of Cooper 0-2. and Garner overshifted toward the first base line on two. There's a check swing. Grounder softly hit to first. Picked up by Rudy. Throws over to the covering pitcher, Lindblad, in time. A little argument from John Pesky there, but he is called out. The play goes 3-1, to one, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for Lindblad. Going to the bottom of the sixth inning, it's Red Sox 4, A's nothing. Greater than you think you are. Going now to the bottom of the sixth inning, and uh, the Oakland crowd is starting to realize that things must be done, and they're starting to cheer for their ball club. Caesar Sovar is going to bat for Phil Garner. 
As again, Alvin Dark has removed Garner from the batting order in about the middle of the game. Caesar Tovar, right-handed hitter, came to this ball club from Texas, played a number of years with the Minnesota Twins, is up. Right-handed batter, Rick Wise, has pitched a great ball game so far, a two-hit shutout through five innings. Tovar has batted once in this series, 0 for 1, fielder's choice against Drago. Wise winds and throws, and it misses way high, ball one. Crowd trying to help out their ball club here. The A's realize that the fans of time are running. They have four chances left. There's a ball low, two and nothing to Tovar. Tovar, and then the top of the order, Campanaris and Washington will go against Wise. The big right-hander gets the sign. Tovar opens stands to the plate. The pitch hits high, ball three. Three and nothing. Wise has walked just one. That was tennis in the fifth inning. He's now three and zero to Tovar. Here it comes. Ball four. Four straight, straight pitches. Second walk given up by Wise. That's only the second walk in the entire ball game. So the A's have a base runner, but nobody out. Then in Pittsburgh, Al Oliver has hit a two-run homer, and in the top of the seventh, the Pirates lead the Reds two to one. It might be interesting if the Red Sox could win this one. The Pirates should take Cincinnati to five games, or vice versa. <laughs> yeah. Kurt Campanaris is the batter, and there's going to be warm-up action in the bullpen as baseman Bill Lee. Is going to warm up. The fellow who was our guest at four Sunday's game saying, I hope I can get into this thing. Throw to first base. Time had been called. Oh, I saw that Tovar was off the bag and threw over there. They would have had him dead. But time had been called, as signified by Ron Luciano, the umpire. So with Lee warming in the bullpen, Wise is set to pitch to the top of the order, Bert Campanera. Campy is 0 for 2. Crowd very much alive here in Oakland. Wise throws, and it's a strike call. Tovar, I can remember him in the days with the Twins. When he's at first base, he gives a funny little fake. The most distinctive fake of any base runner I've ever seen. Hardly ever goes, but he uh, gives a few funny little steps over there, bluffing it, and then turns back. The set by Wise. In the pitch. Check swing foul. Nothing in two to Campanera. Red Sox four, Oakland nothing, sixth inning, game three. Lee starting his warm-up uh, goes well behind the mound, as is his custom. He never starts from 60 feet, six inches from the mound. He'll throw from well back of it and then come in when he's warm and start throwing from the rubber. Nothing in two. The count to Campanera. Tovar, four steps off first. Cooper holds the bag against him. Here's the pitch. Check swing. It's a breaking ball outside. One ball, two strikes. Wise didn't miss by much on that one. Burleson, Doyle shortened up a double play depth. Petroselli even with a bag at third. Time called. Can't be back out a moment. Wise gets ready. And the big scoreboard is flashing. Go, 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 go. The fans are all hollering. As you well can believe. Here for yourself. Here's the set. Here's the pitch. Fly ball. Shallow center field. Lynn comes in. Doyle out. Fred calls for it. Lynn has it. For the first out, we'll have face identification. This is the American League Championship Network. You're listening to the Sound of Sports for Southern New England, WTIC in Hartford, Connecticut, where you'll hear all New England Whalers hockey games. That means right after this baseball game, we'll bring you New England Whalers hockey. Back at Oakland Coliseum, Claudel Washington is the hitter for the A's. He has bounced out twice, once to Wise, 
and went to Doyle, the way in which Wise was involved when he covered first. Tobar at first base, one out. Here's the set. And the pitch. Check swing, but it's a strike call to the outside corner. So far in this game, the Red Sox have not cracked with any mistakes. The mistakes have been made by the world champion A. There's plenty of time left in this game. Here's the pitch. There's a base hit in the right field. Sobar will go to third. Here comes the throw by Evans. Not in time. Runners at first and third. One out. are leading 4 nothing, but the A's have a threat. Wise gets set. Throws. Low. Ball one. Rick has walked two. He has struck out only one. That was the first man in the ball game in the first inning for Oakland. Captain Harris. One ball, no strike. The pause. The pitch. Ball low outside. Two and nothing. And the Banshees are wailing at Elkland Coliseum. Sensing the possibility of a big inning. The kind that their ball club has come up with so many times. Two and oh to Bando. Here's the stretch by Wise. The pitch. Ground ball, a shortstop. Backhanded by Burleson. Goes to Doyle. One to first base. Not in time for the double play, but a run scores. And it's now four to one. Nice backhanded play by Burleson on a hard grounder to the hole. Bando gets the run batted in as Tovar scores. They'd missed the chance for the double play. They didn't have much of one anyway. Washington was retired. Short to second. Six to four. There are two outs now with a runner at first. It's now four to one. And finally the A's have broken the scoring ice. A walk, a single, and a fielder's choice. And some kids are on the field now. And they're throwing paper out in left around Yastrzemski. And the game is going to be held up while the element of the ground crew not in uniform, but out there to help are picking up the paper in left field, also in left center and in right. Well, you don't have to. It's there. <laughs> Tissue is floating all over the Coliseum. It's been doing it from the upper deck and in front of our booths and everything. And uh, might be a little bit of exuberance or surliness or something with the people out here. At any rate, Oakland has scored a run, but they still trail in the ball game four to one. Run batted in for Bando. Pirates leading Cincinnati two to one after seven. Score is four to one here, Red Sox leading. All right, the field's been cleared now. The batter is Reggie Jackson. He has fouled out and singled. He singled the left field in the fourth, 
Ball backhanded beautifully by Yasemski, and Carl threw him out as Jackson tried to take two. Cole and Lee warming in the Red Sox bullpen still. The pitch to Jackson. Strike one, Call. Wise with a good fastball. Nothing and one to Jackson. Always the threat to put it out of here and get the long ball that the A's need right now badly. Here's the set by Wise. Comes in with his pitch and Jackson fouls it off. Nothing and two. Saturday's game was classic Tiant. Sunday's was just a fine ball game all the way around with Yosemite dominating. Fisk also and Cooper and Drago. This has been primarily Red Sox country in this game so far, but the A's trying to get back. As wise as it's a strong ball game. Jim Willoughby is in the Red Sox bullpen now, replacing Paul. Lee is still working. Reggie Jackson strikes out. Reggie Jackson fans with a runner at first base and that ends the inning. That's the second strikeout for Wise in the game. The Athletics get one run on one hit and they leave one. And through six, it's Boston four, Oakland one. Of this winning team. The Red Sox coming to bat in the seventh inning. Leading in this game three by the score of four to one. Standing room and whatever bleacher seats are still available for the World Series will go on sale at the Red Sox ticket office on Jersey Street at Fenway Park Thursday at 9 a.m. Rick Burleson leads off. Seventh inning. Paul Lindblad on the mound and the second baseman now is Cesar Tobar who batted for Garner. He stays in the game and will bat night. Tobar playing second base. Burleson cracks the ground ball up the middle and into center field, past Campanaris' reach. And Burley's on with his second hit. Burleson now has four hits in the playoffs in eight times up. He's batting 500. So the Rooster one, the Rooster two, whatever he is, he's on base. And again, the bullpen gets busy for Alvin Dark. Dick Bosman gets up for the second time to throw. Burleson at first base. Nobody out and one Benicus up. 0 for 3 tonight. Struck out, grounded out, and fly to center. Bill Lee working alone in the Red Sox pen. Benicus bunts one toward first. It's good. Picked up by Lindblad. Throws to first in time. Tobar covers and the sacrifice works. Sacrifice by Benicus. Gets the runner into scoring position. Burleson making it there easily. The play goes from the pitcher to the second baseman covering one to four. Burleson at second. And Denny Doyle will be up. Doyle has been a factor in this series. Tough for a relay on a double play ball on Sunday as Reggie Jackson tried to take him out of it. Stayed right in there and made the double play. In the game tonight, Doyle is two for three and has a run batted in. Muggsy stands in two for three against Lindblad with Burleson at second. Red Sox four and Oakland one. We're in the top of the seventh inning. Lindblad comes in with his pitch and Doyle bangs it right to the mound. Lindblad bluffs the runner back to second. Throws out Doyle. There are two away. Doyle bouncing out. Pitcher to first and here's Yastrzemski. Carl is two for three tonight. Singles into right field. Without stretching the first one. At that time, it looked big, but the Red Sox have put together four runs. He scored a run on a wild pitch in the fifth after he had singled. Yes, digs in against Lindblad. His, uh, both his hits were against Holtzman. Bouncing ball to second base. Up with it, Tovar. Throws to first. That's all. The Red Sox are out on the seventh. No run, one hit, one left. And after six and one half innings, it's Red Sox four, Oakland one. This is an important announcement. Whispering Woods Condominium is finishing the last 20 units. 
Yes, the last 20 units. When finished and sold, you'll no longer be able to get one of these beautiful units with the 7% 50-year mortgages. Act now. Still, no points, no penalties, no closing costs, plus 5% income tax rebate. If you want a beautiful two-bedroom unit in a convenient yet delightfully rural setting, see them now. With Springwood's Condominium, Simmons Avenue, Canton. Only 5% down. Already, 60 lovely families have bought. Many are already moved in. Are they happy? Why not stop in and ask them? Remember, Whispering Woods, the quality condominium at Simmons Avenue, Canton, Connecticut. Only 5% down, and you get the 5% back when you get your tax rebate. Wise on top of a 4-1 lead. We'll face Joe Rudy, Billy Williams, and Gene Tennis in the bottom of the seventh, the stretch half here at Oakland Coliseum. The Red Sox broke on top in the fourth with a run. They got three more in the fifth. Oakland came back with a run in the sixth. Crowd realizing they have three chances left for the A's. Trying to exhort their crew to get some runs. Rudy is 0 for 2. is slide to left field and grounded out. Joe's had three hits in the series. Playing with a sore thumb and uh, of course is not at 100%. But then the Red Sox are minus a left fielder named Jim Rice. They're the sore hand. Broken. Rice is in uniform down on the bench these days and nights. Rick Wise getting the sign. Pitching in the midst of all this noise in Oakland. Here's the pitch. Ground ball towards second. Doyle digs it out. Throws to first. One away. Ball was hit hard, but Denny was playing just about right for Rudy over towards second base. Went to his right and gobbled it up. One down. And here's Billy Williams. Williams has grounded out twice. Wise has given up just three hits. Facing them. A single by Bando in the first, a single by Jackson in the fourth, a single by Washington in the sixth. That is how effective he's been. Pitching now to Williams. Fouls it back. Strike one. Nothing in one to Billy Williams. Wise delivers. And there's a high fly ball to right field. Evans stands in his tracks. Now comes in. Evans under it. He's got it. Two out. Bringing to the plate, Gene Tennis. He's 0 for 1. He walks in the fifth. Top of the eighth inning, Cincinnati batting at Pittsburgh. Still, it's the Pirates two and Cincinnati one as Al Oliver home, home run has held up so far for Pittsburgh as they fight for their lives. Wise throws and tennis takes outside a ball. 49,358 here tonight. Second largest playoff crowd in American League history. They're short playoff history. There's a slider away from tennis and it's ball two. Two and nothing. Two outs, nobody on. Seventh inning. Wise kicks and throws. Low. Three and nothing. Tennis drew 106 walks this year. He always goes around the 100 mark or more. Three and nothing now. 
Rich pitches, strike call. Let her high pitch. Three and one. Lynn is shaded over toward left center. They bunch up tennis there. Give him a gap in right center field. Here it is. Swings and fouls it. Three and two. Wise gets another baseball from plate umpire Bill Kunkel. Three balls, two strikes. The windup and the payoff pitch. High, ball four. Second time he's walked tennis. And the third walk of the game given up by Wise. Two outs, one on, and Billy North, the batter. North has slide to right and fouled out. Left-handed batter, he's a switcher and batting left tonight. The A's have a runner on and two out. The on-deck hitter is Tobar. Wise, slightly bent, looks for the sign. Petroselli in on the grass, a bit at third. The pitch to North, high and tight, ball one. Both bullpens are quiet right now. One and nothing to North. Wise sets and throws. Low, ball two. Fisk asks for time and trots out to talk to his big right-hander. And again, Bill Lee gets up to throw in the bullpen for Boston. And Dick Drago, who pitched a fine bit of, bit of baseball on Sunday, is joining him. So it's left and right-handed action suddenly in the bullpen for Boston. Wise seems to be struggling just a little bit now for the first time, Ned. Yeah, the fact that he's walked one each in the last three innings and something his control was almost letter perfect up until that walk two tennis in the fifth, the first of two that Gene received. The count is two and nothing now. Another walk or anything like it would, of course, put the tying run at the plate. Here's his. It's ball three, high and inside. Three balls, no strikes. And Wise is for up with his pitches now. Rick Seth throws, gets it in there for a called strike. Three and one. Red Sox out hitting the A's nine to three in this one. Three one pitch about to be made. Here it comes. Strike two called. North looking at a pitch that nipped the outside corner. And Rick is right back with him. Three balls, two strikes. Tennis, off first base. Cooper not holding. He'll be moving. Here it comes. Runner goes. Ground ball to the right side. Taken by Doyle. Throws to Wise. He's out. Hitting's over. Again, the Doyle-Wise combination works. And it's no run, no hits, and one left for the Athletics. At the end of seven. It is Red Sox 4, Oakland 1. Hi, Joe Garagiola here. You know, last winter, your Chrysler Plymouth dealer brought you the first great rebate. In spring, he offered another one to go with your tax rebate. And here we go again. We did it before, and now we'll do it again. It's our nationwide sale. See your participating Chrysler Plymouth dealer and make your best year-end deal on a new 75 Fury or full-size Chrysler and get $300 back. $200 back on a new 75 Duster, Valiant, or Voyager. Just think, a great year-end deal plus up to $300 back. But an offer like this has to be limited to retail customers only. So come on in, because when it comes to saving you money... Well, we've got
gotten a score from Pittsburgh, and those Reds have irrepressibly done it again. Uh, not yet, but they're leading now. Pete Rose hit a two-run over, and it's the Reds three, the Pirates two in the eighth inning. Rose, I believe, if you figure, Jim, no matter if they play in it, if, if Cincinnati plays anybody in a World Series, that's got to be a key man. You say the benches and all those, but uh, Pete Rose seems to be the climax kind of ball player that can do it. He's their leader, and they follow his example, and he's not a home run hitter. I think he only hit about six during the regular season, but here he comes up and gets the key one tonight. Is there in the late innings there in the eighth, and we move into the eighth inning here with Fisk, Glenn, and Tupper Sully to go on Lindblad, who's come on and pitched a tough relief step since he moved into the ball game in the fifth inning. Fisk leads off. He is one for three, a run-scoring single in the fifth. Dick Jago warming up for Boston. Bosman and Bonson. The B-Boys warming up for the Oakland A's. And Lindblad stares in. Takes his sign, and here we go in the eighth. Outside for a ball, one and over the count. Ball game not quite two hours old yet. The left-hander flicks again. Ground ball. Through the left field base hit. Hits perfectly in between Dando and Campanaris, and Fisk is on. That's the tenth hit for the Red Sox. Only the second off Lindblad. And the batter is Fred Lynn. One for three on the day. Facing Lindblad of the fifth inning, he fouled out to Rudy. And Petra Sully will be next. Lee now sits down, and Drago throws alone in the Red Sox bullpen. Runner at first, and nobody out. Lynn shortens up, bunts the ball out towards Lindblad. He picks it up. He'll throw it on to first base in time. Lynn has sacrificed one to four. Lindblad to Tovar, who covered. Darrell Johnson playing for that one big more insurance run, if he can get it. Enrico Petroselli the batter. He's had one hit, but it drove in a run in the fourth inning, the first run of the ball game. And Alvin Dark is on his way to the mound. Tennis and Lindblad await his arrival, and the captain of the A's, Sal Bando, also moves in. Oakland with his back to the wall all the way now, trailing 4-1 here in the eighth inning. Dark has the right-handers warmed up, and he's got two right-hand hitters coming up here in Petroselli and then Dwight Evans. And the plate umpire, Bill Kunkel, goes out to break up the conference. He stays with Lindblad. Rico struck out chasing Holtzman in the second inning. Then got the base hit off Kenny, and last time up hit the ball hard, but right at Bando. Fisk carrying the big insurance run out at second with one away closed up on the left side of the infield. Here's the delivery, and a line drive to Bando again, double play. And no, Tovar drops the ball. <laughs> again, Rico ripped a bullet head high at Bando, and they had Fisk out by five feet, and Tovar couldn't hold on to the throw. So Fisk gets back in. Boy, Rico has really tagged the last two up, but nothing but outs to show for it. So here is Evans, 0 for 3 on the day, or on the night, and they're going to put him on. To work to the left-hand hitting Cecil Cooper. This will be the first walk given up by Lindblad. And Coop is hitless on the night, too. But left-hand pitching normally has not bothered Cooper that much this year. Cooper against Lindblad, uh, 1 for 3 in the regular season. So Evans on his way down to first base. Just gone at second. And here comes Bando and Tennis out to talk to Paul Lindblad again once more. They have now charged Tovar with an error for allowing Tiss to get back in there safely. Well, they have not put it up on the scoreboard as yet. Two on, two out. And it rides with Big Coop right now. Fisk off second, Evans off first. 4-1 Boston, top of the eighth. 
The pitch by Lynn Bland. Crowd scooper a little bit. One ball, no strike. You can feel the tension here in the Oakland Alameda Coliseum. All over the place. The bluff throw to second. And Campanaris cut to the bag, but Lynn Bland never cut it loose. Fisk has led a Carol to Pauline out there in second base since he arrived there. Here's the pitch to Cooper. Foul back on the play for a strike, one and one. Red Sox bullpen now inactive. Jago and Lee both down. One ball, one strike. Fisk off second, Evans off first. The veteran Paul Lindblad brings it in and a big swing and a miss by Cooper. Strike two. One and two, the count. Set him a breaking ball away from a left-hand batter. Don Zimmer yelling words of encouragement down to Cooper. He's got one big cut left. As the Red Sox try to build up a more comfortable lead for Rick Wise to carry into the final two innings here of game three. Here's the delivery. And a shot into left center field with base hit. Here comes Fisk around third. Evans heads for third. He gets in there. Now they've got Cooper hung up. And the throw is back in the first. And the throw to the plate. Now they've got Evans hung up. And he's tagged out. But a run scored. And Fisticuffs may be coming along here as they have to separate Evans, who was pushed down by Gene Tennis, but nothing comes of it. To give Cooper a run scoring single, and the out recorded. Six to four to two. The Red Sox get a run on two hits, an error, and one man left on base. We go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. Boston five and Oakland one. See your international harvester dealers in Rocky Hill, Adam, and South Windsor for immediate delivery on the Snow Fighter with something extra. They're talking about the International Harvester Cadet Lawn Tractor, a wintertime bargain that keeps giving economical value all year long. It's a wintertime bargain because right now is the best time to get your Cadet Tractor with either a snow thrower attachment or front blade for fast, easy snow removal around your place. But the Cadet Lawn Tractor comes with something extra, a mower attachment included as standard equipment. For year-round value, no one can touch the cadet. Your choice of either 7-horsepower engine with all-gear drive or 8-horsepower with the convenience of hydrostatic drive. Either way, it's simple to operate, easy to own, and will provide years of work, winter and summer, with little attention. See the IH Cadet Lawn Tractor Specials with front blade or snow thrower attachments at E.P. Hayes Incorporated, 667 Cromwell Avenue, in Rocky Hill, Highway Motor Sales, Route 9A, Saybrook Road, Adam, and at the South Windsor Equipment Company, 89 Sullivan Avenue, in South Windsor, Connecticut. This is WTIC in Hartford, Connecticut. Ball thrown all over the infield on that last play as they had Cooper hung up, and then suddenly Evans broke forward to plate, and he was just shoved down to the ground on the tag out by Tennis. And when he tried to get up, Bando, I think, was standing right over him to push him down again. And Zimmer got there and was in front of everybody and said, let's don't get in any trouble now. Here's Tobar up now as we go to the last half of the eighth inning. Came up with a pinch hitter in the sixth inning for Garner and Walk. Right hand hitter. Wise has another run. 5-1 and the delivery misses outside for a ball. 1-0 the count. Boy, it's a root and red sock dug out now. The guys seated down there, clapping their hands and yelling at wise. Straight call to the knees, one and one the count. Rick Wise in one of his finest hours. They got fireworks exploding out in center field and everything else going on here. The one-one delivery by the big right hander. Lined in the center field. Here comes Wynn. He can't get it. The base hit. Steve Artovar rips a single into center field, and here come the A's again. Hit number four off wide. And again, the bullpen for the Boston Red Sox comes up. Bill Lee, Dick Drago, 
Bert Campanaris, the batter. He is nothing for three on the night. Lynn looked like he might charge that ball and try to make one of his patented rolling dives, but had to lay off of it and play it on the first hop. Tovar at first, and Cooper is holding to him. Here's the pitch. A ball inside. One and over got. Wise has struggled a bit from the fifth inning on. Only the second time in the game that the A's have had their lead batter on, and both times it's been Tovar. Here's the pitch. Bouncing foul along third for a strike. One and one the count. Rick Wise trying to hang tough and bring it all back to Boston, baby. Cincinnati trying to wrap up the Pirates in three straight as they lead three to two late inning. One ball, one strike on Campanara. We'll worry about them a little bit later on. Right now, the concern is open. Here's the pitch outside for ball two. Two balls, one strike. Wise has struck out two. He's walked three. Walking lead by Tovar. Nobody out here. Eighth inning. Here's the pitch to Kevin Harris. Foul back again. And the count goes two balls, two strikes. Fifth takes the new ball and carries it out to Rick Wise with words of encouragement. We well, have to keep looking around. They keep throwing these smoke bombs or something out behind him and all kinds of things erupting from the ground around him. And we may never get out of here alive if they win tonight. <laughs> I'm going to try. Now Wise is... Uh, Pointing to somebody, but nobody moves on him. Two balls, two strikes. Tovar with his lead, and the Oakland Partisan starts to build it up again in a wild chant here in the last half of the eighth inning. Here's the delivery. A little number foul along third. Kevin Harris tops the ball, and a good thing it went foul, because I don't think they're going to get Campy with uh, his speed. So it's still two balls and two strikes. warmed up about four times now. And Drago has certainly thrown long enough to be ready if he is needed. Wise looking in at fifth. A real long look this time. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Ground ball hit down to Carlson. He's up, goes on to first in time. He just got him. Good play by Rick Burleson. I had to charge in almost to the grass. Couldn't get any sting in his throw, but had it accurately into the waiting glove of Cooper as Tovar moved into second. So there's one away, and Claudel Washington, the batter. One for three on the night. Campanaris, the big out in the leadoff spot where they moved him for the first time in the championship playoffs. He has gone 0 for 4. takes his glasses off. There's a lot more paper out in left field, but Jazz is not paying any attention to it. Nobody's going out to get it, so I guess I just have to run through it. One on, one out. Tovar at second. Cooper deep at first. 12 feet off the line. Petroselli, five feet off the line at third and right up the grass. The outfield a little around toward left. Here's the pitch. Swing on and miss for a strike. 0-1 oh, the count. Wise squares away once more. Not paying too much attention to Tovar. Is anybody out there? Rick to the sub position. Here's the pitch. Strike two calls. Got the breaking ball over the outside corner. And it is 0-2 on Claudel Washington. Who has authored one of the four hits off Rick.
Dirk settles back on his haunches once more. Red Sox are leading 5-1, to one, and the A's trying to run at him. Here's the delivery. Foul out of play. Third base side. Still nothing in two. In the top of the ninth at Three Rivers Stadium, Cincinnati leads the Pirates 3-2. to two. So the Pirates are coming down to their final gap. Tovar off second. Two strikes on Washington. And the crowd here still yelling and screaming for an Oakland rally. Wise taking a long time to get the sign. Washington waits for him. Here's the pitch. Foul back again. No ball. Two strikes on Claudel. Both Lee and Drago are ready. In fact, if Drago's not throwing right now, he's just looking in at the plate. Wise gives a big sigh out there on the mound. The big right-hander has given his all out there this evening and still has a ways to carry it. Tovar leads off second. There's the pitch to Washington. Caught at him. One and two the count. Rick with another look around at his outfield, which finds Jastrzemski a little bit over toward the line. Any gap for Washington is in right center. Rick Wise is ready. And now the pitch. Ground ball, right side. Denny Doyle boosts it, picks it up, and has no play, an error. Error on Doyle all the way on a routine chance, and the A's have runners on at first and third, and their power coming up. Boston's first error. Kyle Bando, the batter, and the place has erupted here in Oakland. Tovar on his third. Washington on his first. One man out. And time has to be called. They've got too many papers out there now. And Yaz is collecting some debris and stuff that's been thrown out there. Doyle went immediately to the mound and uh, probably apologized to Rick Wise. So why just uh, kind of put his hand on his shoulder and said, forget it, let's go get the next guy, I believe, because it's one of those funny balls that you look at him and you think that might happen because it had a funny last short hop to it. And it's kind of scribbling and scridging. Make up a couple of words because it's got down to Doyle. So the A's have aired twice and the Red Sox once. So here is Bando and Jackson coming up behind him. It's a long way from being in the bag yet. Don't go away. 5-1 Boston. But the A's with another big threat here. Bando, one for three on the night. And if you're nervous back there, how would you like to be here? In a veritable madhouse of sound. Constant gym and screaming to the Oakland fans. Rick Wise ready to work the bando. Here's the pitch. Five for a ball. One and over count. Infield, of course, double play depth. Outfield deep and around toward left on Bando, who has been the leader of this world championship ball club in every sense of the word. Here's the pitch to Bando. Ground ball hit down to Burleson. And he can't find it. and went over, got it, and the ball got in behind him. And an error will be charged to Burleson. So the Red Sox come apart here in the last half of the eighth inning, and the tying run is now at the plate in Reggie Jackson and Joe Rudy on deck. Rick Wise should be in the dugout, but he's not. He's working with two on and only one out. And Jackson, one for three on the night up there. And 
It's a very quiet little man. The Red Sox rooters down there right now. The tension just builds to great magnitude here at the Coliseum. Washington at second. Bando on at first. One man out. Bando works to Rudge. Line drive, base hit. He struggles it. One run is in. They hold Jackson to a single on another fine play by Carl Yostrzemski. It's a 5-3 ball game, and the fine runs are on. The A's have suddenly come alive, and Darrell Johnson is on his way to the mound. Tell you what, Jim, that play by Yostrzemski saved another run and it also saved the runner from going to second base in scoring position. He made a dive out there in left center. If that ball gets by and it goes 375, and another run scores, you got a guy at second base. Fine play by Yaz. What a series he's had. Darrell Johnson took the mound. Certainly this not wise as fault. One error by Doyle, one by Burleson. And the call has gone to the bullpen, and again it goes to Dick Drago. So a gallant Rick Wise in this third and all-important ball game goes seven and one-third innings. Gives up three runs, five hits, walked three, struck out two, and one more time, the big mustachioed right-hander Richard Drago is called into the breach. Drago did his thing on Sunday at Fenway Park, coming on to nail down a win for Roger Moret as he pitched three scoreless innings giving up only one hit, or two hits in that time, a double and a single, and getting big outs all the way. And he did it by just throwing the fastball, and he threw it by a couple of batters, striking out two, and uh, having a wild pitch. But Drago's going to come on as Wise gets a fine hand, and deservedly so for a gutty, fine ball game. It's a big right-hander, one of his finest efforts in a long, long while, and he should, as you say, have been in the dugout with a four-run lead, but the two errors paved the way for the base hit by Jackson, and the A's come on as they so often have done. So it's a two-run ball game now, with the lead run at the plate in the person of Joe Rudy when Drago finally gets in there. Drago on the year was the leading relief pitcher for the Red Sox, two and two record, with 15 saves, and he's got one save in this playoff series. So it all boils down once again to the final two innings, and number 34 is getting up in the bullpen for the Oakland A's, Raleigh Finger. And this is a boiler here, and out in Pittsburgh, Cincinnati has changed pitchers in the last half of the ninth inning where the Pirates trail 3-2. Pine runs her on base. The go-ahead run is at the plate. And Jim Willoughby is up from the Red Sox bullpen as Lee sits down. It all started on a base hit by Tovar. Then the ground out. A routine ground ball that Doyle couldn't handle. And then Burleson had a much tougher chance, and a tough error was charged to Burleson. He had to go deep in the hole to get that. Still only one man out. And Joe Rooney, nothing for three on the night. And the A's a long way from being dead yet. Field deep and straight away for Rudy. 5 3 Boston Lady. They've out hit the A's. They've now changed the ruling and taken the air away from Burleson and given a hit to Bando. We'll make it six hits off Rick Wise. They go getting ready. Bando at third. Jackson on at first. Drago is set. Here's the pitch. Ground ball hit down to Burleson. On to Doyle for one. On to first. They've got two. And Dick Drago with one pitch gets out of it. On a 6-4-3 double play. Two runs for the Oakland A's. On now three hits. One error. And one man left on base. At the end of eight. Wild, crazy innings. Boston five and Oakland three. Variety is the spice of life. New places to go, new things to do. I'll buy that. 
except when it comes to my beer. No surprises, please. Give me Budweiser every time. The way I see it, Bud's unchanging quality is one thing you can count on. And every taste of Beechwood Age Budweiser says so. Loud and clear. Hear it talking? How would you like a beautiful 20-ounce Red Sox mug banded in gold? This fantastic gift and memento of the season's Eastern Division Championship has the Red Sox insignia and the entire team roster permanently fired on it. The Red Sox Team Championship mug. It's a great collector's item. To get yours, write Post Office Box 1776, New Haven, Connecticut. The Red Sox Championship mug, 895. Shipped to you COD. Write Box 1776, New Haven, Connecticut. Hurry, supplies are limited. Ted Martinez says gone into second base, replacing Cesar Tovar to get a little more defense in here as we go to the ninth inning now. And the A's trailing by only two runs. Paul Lindblad still hanging in there. Fingers is uh, seated again. And the Boston bullpen is also down. And Mr. Ned Martin, I hope nobody takes this wrong, but I hope this will be the final inning we will work together in 1975. Well, I hope, <laughs> I hope you're right on that one, Jimbo. <laughs> I hope it's not the last inning we ever work together. <laughs> it is the ninth. The witching ninth as it's a 5-3 Red Sox lead. Paul Lindblad will pitch to Burleson. Then it'll be the top of the order, Benicus and Doyle. The Red Sox have led throughout. One run, four runs, four runs, and now two. The pitch to Burley is a curveball and a dirt ball one. Burleson is two for three tonight. A single and a double. Here's the pitch, and it's fouled out of play, first base side. Reds leading in the ninth inning, the Pirates up. A couple of runners on, I understand, with two outs. And that one is going right down to the wire, too. Wild third night of game three in the National and American League. Lindblad to Burleson. Rick swings, fly ball, center field. Backboard goes north. Under it. Backpedaling. He's got it. One out. Juan Benicus is hitless tonight in three trips. He has sacrificed once. Raleigh Fingers throwing leisurely in the bullpen for the A's. And that paper's on the field again out in left. And the umpire are waiting for somebody to get it off again. And the kids from the Hayes bullpen area go out to pick it up as the Oakland fans show their class by throwing tissue on the field. They've also had exploding uh, things like Roman candles and everything else going up and down. Fireworks are not the loud exploding kind, but the ones that make smoke and light. And even... The A's players are getting into the act. Reggie Jackson and Billy North throwing cans over the fence that had been thrown on the field. It's down to the ninth inning, what may be the final inning for the Oakland A's this year. But then again, maybe it's not. They have a one chance left. What they want to do is keep the Red Sox at bay and have this thing on a two-run basis going to the bottom of the ninth. And in that bottom of the ninth inning, the Athletics will have... Billy Williams, Gene Tennis, and Billy North do up. All right, the field is cleared again for the ninth. The count on Benicus, no count. He's standing in there, clear against Lindblad. The left-hander has done a good job, throws, swinging strike. Off-speed pitch that had Benicus fooled. Lindblad gave up a run in the eighth inning on a couple of base hits and a missed double play. Benicus bunts toward first, pretty good. Lindblad covers, bare hands, it throws to Rudy in time. And Benicus is out. Two down in the Red Sox ninth. Pitcher to first. Now Denny Doyle. Two for four on the ninth. Driving in a run in the fifth with a single. Scoring a run in the same inning. Reggie Jackson gets in back into position in right field. He was over toward the line after backing up that play. 
Now the pitch by Lindblad, and Doyle sends a high fly ball. Got foul down the right field line. Rudy down there. He's got plenty of room. He's got it for the out. And the Red Sox are down in order in the top of the ninth. Nothing across. And going to the bottom of the ninth inning. The score is the Red Sox 5, the Athletics 3. G. Fox salutes the Red Sox. Tough, tenacious, terrific, and every last one of them nine feet tall. And for all of you who take your baseball as seriously as they do, G. Fox has a handsome ceramic sign that's just great for chug-a-lugging your cheers. The symbol of the Red Sox is on one side, the names of the players on the other. It's a real conversation piece, one you'll enjoy showing off to friends. You can get yours right now at any G. Fox store for just $8.95. It's in the men's gift department on the main floor. So hurry in or call 522-5151 at any hour of the day or night. Give the lady on the phone your credit card number and she'll send your Red Sox sign on its way to you. Get in on the excitement and glory. It's fun to be on the winning side. Don't forget the phone number, 522-5151 if you're in Hartford, or toll-free from anywhere else in Connecticut, 1-800-842-1520. Keep a memento of this winning team. So here we go to the bottom of the ninth inning at Oakland. The Red Sox holding a 5-3 to three lead. If Dick Drago can hold the A's in this inning, the Red Sox will be the champions of the American League in 1975 and will go on to the World Series. Should the A's pull it out, there'll be another game here tomorrow night. Drago has a two-run lead to Nurse. And he'll face, first of all, Billy Williams, then Gene Tennis, and then Bill Norris. The Pirates have loaded the bases against the Reds in the ninth inning, with the Reds leading 3-2, to two, two out. Everything's coming down to it. The pitch to Williams is a fastball outside, ball one. Dick Drago came on in the pressure spot in the eighth inning with two runs home, runners at first and second, first and third, and pitched a double play ball to Rudy to get out of it. The count is 1-0 and to Williams. Drago winds, throws. Strike one call. One ball, one strike. Right hander goes to work and throws. And strike two, swinging. One ball, two strikes. One ball, two strikes. Williams. Adjust his helmet, backing out a moment. Drago bends in and gets the sign, throws, foul back. The count is one and two. Jim Willoughby and Bill Lee in the bullpen for Boston. The Red Sox need three outs. The A's need three runs. Or at least two, or at least two, to hang in. Drago winds, throws, ball outside. It's two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Drago reads his sign from fifth. Here's a two-two offering. Swung on, fouled off. Down hangs at two and two. The Oakland people have looks like an effigy of a Red Sox ball player. They're going to hang and back of the dugout of Oakland. Now they're moving up the third base side into the stands. Two balls, two strikes. Red Sox lead 5-3. Hold on. Drago ready. Drago throws. There's a ball hit off Drago over to Cooper. Cooper fields it to Drago. He's out at first base. A play that goes one to three to one. A curious play, a hot shot that was hit off the body of Drago. It took a crazy bounce over to Cooper. Drago alertly got off the mound and went over to first base. And the play goes one to three to one. There's one out. A very close play at first. And over in Pittsburgh, Richie Hebner has walked with the bases loaded, and that game is tied up 3-3 with the Pirates having a chance to win it right here in Stay Alive. What a night. 
You better believe it. <laughs> Charlie Moss, the trainer, has gone out to see Drago, and Dick says, I'm okay. That ball was headed for center field. It just was lucky for Dick, and maybe a little painful for him to get that kind of assist, but he also got the foot out. As he now will take a warm-up pitch or two to test to see if it's all right. He looks like a hit off his leg. But there's one important out in the ninth inning, and one important man out of there, Billy Williams. Now Gene Tennis is up. Otherwise, they don't make that play. It means tennis is a tying run and then with the capability of putting the ball in the stand. The bleachers. One away in the ninth. Red Sox, two outs away from the pennant. Drago delivers. Tennis takes the strike from the inside corner. Doesn't like the call by plate umpire Kunkel. Lee and Willoughby continue to throw. Gene Tennis waggling the bat, now waiting. The pitch to him. Fly ball, center field. Lynn comes in. Doyle goes out. Burleson calls. Burleson has it. Two away, one to go. Ball was hung up by the wind out there. Lynn gave way, and Denny went out, but uh, Rick said, I have it all the way. So now, Drago needs just one out. And watching down around the first base dugout where the Red Sox contingent is waving flags. Mr. Yawkey there, Dick O'Connell. One out away from a probable dream. Now time call. Billy North is the batter. He steps out. You sense he's looking back at the fans who've caused some more paper on the field out there. And he is just standing there with his hands on his hips, glaring at them. They're throwing apples and oranges and everything else at him. I don't yeah. blame him. It's like the 1934 series with Joe Midwick. In left field. They threw fruit and stuff all over the place at him. He had to be taken out for his own safety. Now time has been held up. As the Oakland fans apparently cannot believe. The Red Sox lead 5-3 with two outs in the ninth. The batter is Bill North, who is hitless in three trips. Jim Holt is on deck. Should North get on, Holt, who's had one pinch hit and one long drive that Lynn hauled in on Sunday as a pinch hitter. North is up. Drago pitches. North takes ball one. Smoke curling around in right center field for more firecrackers. Wind blowing from left to right and swirling around at home plate. Drago delivers. North swings, fouled off. And the count is one ball, one strike. The season coming to a dramatic close here as the Red Sox, not favored in the series at all, certainly not favored the sweep, are on the verge of doing just that. Here's the pitch. High and outside, ball two, two and one. The A's battling to keep alive and do what they've done three straight years. But this is the fourth. Here's the pitch to North. Ball outside. It's now three and one. The Pirates did not score any more runs, and they're in a tenth now with the Cincinnati Reds batting tied up 3-3 with Pittsburgh. The count on North. Three balls, one strike. Drago winds, throws. Ball four, and the tying run will come up. Drago walks tennis for North, and it is going to be Jim Holt to bat for Martinez. Jim Holt, one for two in this playoff series. Pinch hit off uh, in the first game and a long drive that Lynn hauled in in center field in the second game. Darrell Johnson has gone out to have a word with Drago. Fisk is moving back behind home plate. So it all boils down now to the tying run at home plate. As Holt, a left-handed batter with some power, is up there. Look at that Red Sox dugout, man. Boy, they are poised and ready. Everybody right up on the top step. Holt hit 220 on the year, had two home runs. Drago bends over and gets the sign. North at first base, two out. 
The set. The pitch. Ball way outside and high. It's 1-0. and oh. Lee and Willoughby throwing in the bullpen for Boston. Now it is left and right action down there. Nobody working for the A's. Drago gets set. Holt waiting. Here it comes. Ball outside. It's 2 and nothing. And things are getting a little tighter. Go get him, Arnold. Two balls, no strikes. North leads away. Very short lead. He's not going anywhere unless there's a ball hit someplace. Here's the pitch to Holt, and he takes ball three. Suddenly, Drago has lost all semblance of where home plate is. He walks north on a 3-1 count. He is now 3-0 to pinch hitter Holt. Holt is the fourth man used in the number nine spot. Campanaris on deck. The pitch. Strike one call. He gets it in there, and it's 3-1. and one. More things being thrown over the fence in right center field onto the playing area. Papers drifting around the infield. The set by Drago. Here it is. Strike two call, and we come down to three and two. The pitch of the season facing Dick Drago right now. Jim Holt, the batter, to face that pitch. Here's the stretch. Here's the pitch. It is foul back. Campanaris or uh, Campanaris waiting at the on-deck circle, hoping to come up. North is on the move. And the suspense hangs. Jim Holt. Three balls, two strikes, two out. Right side of the infield deep. Cooper laying back. Drago getting set with a payoff pitch once again. Pauses. Pitches. Ground ball, past Drago, charged by Doyle, throws to first, the Red Sox win the pennant! The Red Sox win it, they're all out of the field as they have beaten the Oakland A's three in a row and go on to face the winner of the Cincinnati-Pittsburgh Series on Saturday and we'll be home tomorrow morning. In the ninth inning, the Oakland A's, no runs, no hits, they had one left. Final score, Red Sox five, the A's three, we'll wrap it up in a moment. Transition. <laughs> The change of seasons in New England alters our activities in business, leisure, and clothes. The bustling center of buying for the men of greater Hartford is DeGemis House of Clothing, Fashion Square, Main Street, Glastonbury. For 25 years, DeGemis has been providing the extra tailoring touch in casual clothes. We suggest the complete collection from Eagle shirt makers, such as magnificent colorful sports shirts by Pierre Cardin, Lomo turtleneck sweaters, a dressier turtleneck in 100% oil on in many attractive autumn shades. Eagle shirt makers have styles and coordinated colors in shirts and sweaters to complement you whatever your activity. Did Gemma's House of Clothing's collection from Eagle will satisfy your sense of taste, fashion, quality, and economy. Become active members of the DeGemis House of Clothing. Closed Monday, open nightly till 9, Saturdays till 5.30. DeGemis, three generations suiting you. Well, it's all over. The long, grinding pennant race is over, and the Red Sox, glory be, have won it. By going right to the heart of a champion, the defending world champions, the Oakland A's, an excellent ball club, and taking them three in a row. And not anybody, anybody, I don't believe Jim Woods would ever have to believe that they would sweep this ball club and then win it out here, too. A very proud Mr. Yorkie is walking up the runway now with Haywood Sullivan and Dick O'Connell to go in and join his ball club. They did it. They did it the hard way. They beat one of the finest teams, a team that has won three consecutive world championships. They came out here and beat them right in their home ballpark. Well, before giving the line totals, Mr. Woods, it was the last inning we'll call in a regular season game together. And uh, again, it's been just uh, absolutely great. That's all. That's all I can say to you, Ned. And I thank thank you very much for everything. I think it's settled it all. See you later. All right. We might have a toddy on the plane. I just might. <laughs> Break down. <laughs> okay, here are the uh, line totals on the final game. The Red Sox had five runs, 11 hits, one error. They left five. The A's, three runs, six hits, two errors. They left six. The winning pitcher, Rick Wise, a great ball game. 
and a strong save again for Mr. Drago, his second out of the three games that the Red Sox won. And the loss goes to Ken Holtzman, who deserved a better fate, really. He pitched as well as any pitcher did in this series for the eighth. But he took his second loss. Todd and Lindblad finished up. There were no home runs. A couple of hits by Fisk, a couple by Yastrzemski, who had a great series. Denny Doyle and the heroes were leaping up and down as they did the job and played a tune on the world champion Oakland A's, and they did it without the Fenway wall. And Yastrzemski showed he can play left field still and can play it anywhere. So that takes care of things from this. There will be more coverage on this game with Jim Woods and a couple of uh, programs and uh, a guest here and there. But right now, this is Ned Martin speaking for Jim Woods. From Oakland Coliseum, the final score, the Red Sox 5 and the Oakland A's 3, this is the American League Championship Network.